Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of this platformer series. So uh, to start off with, let's open up our player script and I'm going to create a new vector 3 to store our player's velocity. I'm also going to create a float for the gravity and I'll just pick a number for now, say negative 20. And let's create an update method and each frame we're going to apply the gravity to our velocity. So we'll say velocity.y plus equals gravity and we'll multiply by time dot delta time and then we want our controller to actually move the player so we'll call controller dot move which is a method that we haven't actually created yet but we will do so in a moment and we'll pass in velocity multiplied by time dot delta time all right let's save that and go into our controller and create a public void called move which of course takes in a vector 3, which we can also call velocity. And at the end of this method, we'll be calling transform.translate velocity. So the basic idea is that before we do that, we'll have all our code to handle the collisions, and that will actually modify the velocity so that we don't go through something, and then we'll finally move it with the modified velocity. All right, but for now, let's go back into Unity and uh, let's create a new quad. And this is going to be my ground. I'm just going to call it obstacle. And uh, let's create a new material. I'll call that obstacle as well and just assign it. And uh, go scale this out. And let's actually make the player red, just to liven the scene up. And um, we must make sure that we remove the mesh collider from the from the obstacle and add instead a box collider 2D. All right. So now let's go. Well, actually, let's quickly run this just to see how it looks. So. As you can imagine, the player is just falling straight down. So let's uh, do some collision detection. Let's go into the controller script. And uh, I'm going to move this update raycast origins from the update method to the move method. Um, I actually want to remove the update method entirely. So uh, let's uh, now put the calculate ray spacing in the start method um, after we've got the collider because we don't need to do that every frame. We'd only ever need to recalculate if we actually change the amount of horizontal or vertical rays. So uh, yeah, for now we can just do it once. And let's create a void vertical collisions. And I'm going to put this for loop for drawing vertical rays inside of there. And we can destroy our update method. We don't need it anymore. All right, so this vertical collisions is going to take in a reference to the velocity vector. So all that the reference keyword means is that uh, usually when you pass a variable into a method, it creates a copy of that variable. But uh, in this instance, if I say uh, vertical collisions ref velocity, um, it's now passing a reference of this velocity variable, so any change inside of this method that I make to velocity will actually change this variable over here. So, inside of vertical collisions, let's go ahead and uh, get the direction of our y velocity. So we can call that float direction y, and this will be equal to the sine with a g of velocity dot y. So basically if we're moving down that will be equal to negative one and if we're moving up it will be equal to positive one. Now let's also create a float for the uh, length of our ray which I'm just call ray length and this will be equal to the absolute value of velocity dot y. So that just forces it to be positive and to that we want to add our skin width since, uh, of course, we're inset by skin width, so we need to add it again. 
Okay, so next, inside of the for loop, we want to create a vector2 called ray origin. Well, ray origin. And uh, we want to, first of all, see in which direction we're moving. So if we're moving down, we want our rays to start from the bottom left corner. And if, on the other hand, we're moving up, then we want it to start in the top left corner. So let's open a bracket and make the statement direction y is equal to negative 1. We're moving down. And if that's the case, so we add a question mark to say if that's true, then we're setting ray origin equal to raycast origins dot bottom left. Otherwise, if we're moving up, so we say colon, we'll set it to raycast origins dot top left. Now, uh, let's add to ray origin. So we'll say ray origin plus equals. We want to add vector two dot right multiplied by the ray spacing, the vertical ray spacing multiplied by i, just like we did down here when we were drawing it. And uh, we also want to add the velocity of on the x-axis, since we want to cast our vertical rays from the point where we will be once we've actually moved on the x-axis. So uh, let's enclose this all in brackets here, and we'll say plus velocity dot x. All right. Now we can create a new raycast hit 2D. We'll call that hit, and it's equal to physics 2D dot raycast. So we'll perform a raycast from our ray origin. And for the direction, we want it to go in direction y. So we'll multiply vector 2 dot up by our direction y variable. For the distance, that's ray length. And we do actually want to have a layer mask uh, to be able to determine which objects uh, we want to collide with. So let's create a public layer mask called collision mask. And we'll pass that in over here. All right. So if hit, in other words, if our raycast hits something, then the first thing that we want to do is to set our y velocity equal to the sort of amount that we have to move to get from our current position to the point at which the ray intersected with an obstacle. So uh, essentially the, the, the ray distance. So we can do this by saying velocity.y is equal to hit.distance. And uh, we want to maintain our direction. So we have to multiply this by direction y since a hit dot distance is always positive. And uh, since we added skin width to our ray length uh, up here, we just want to make sure that we subtract it from our velocity. So uh, let's just add some brackets around here and say minus skin width. All right, now the other thing that we need to do is to say that the ray length is now equal to hit dot distance. And uh, in case it isn't obvious why we do this, let me just uh, uh, mock up a, a scenario over here. Um, say we're moving downwards and we cast a ray from the bottom left and it hits this little uh, obstacle over here and it says, okay, this is my new move velocity. And then we cast another ray from the other corner and this collides with this here, then... Uh, it will think that that's its new velocity and it will just move straight through this object. So we change the ray length once we hit something to that distance so that uh, it can't hit something that's actually further away. All right. Oops, I deleted the wrong thing. Uh, go back, delete this one. All right, so if I saved my script, which I think I did, I did indeed, then uh, we should actually be ready to test this. Um, we must just make sure that we assign our collision mask. So we want that to be equal to objects that we collide with. So let's actually create a, a new layer for obstacles. And I'll assign that to my obstacle. 
and in this collision mask I'll choose the obstacle layer. It's very very important that you do not have the same layer uh, contained in this collision mask as the uh, as the player has assigned because then this sort of thing happens, it collides with itself and it slowly rises into the air. So I'm just going to remove that and let's test it now. Hooray, it's colliding with the ground. Boom. All right, brilliant. Okay, so now that we've got the vertical collisions working, uh, it shouldn't be too much extra work to quickly get the horizontal collisions working. First of all, let's open up the player script though and uh, let's create a new vector2 to, to store the input. This will be equal to a new vector2 and we need to get our horizontal input. So that's input.getAccessRaw horizontal and for the y-axis input.getAccessRaw vertical. All right and then each frame we can set the x velocity equal to input.x multiplied by move speed and let's just create a variable up here float move speed to set that to 6 for now and save and go into the controller class and let's copy this entire vertical, vertical collisions method just paste it above and I'm going to rename it to horizontal collisions and uh, we just want to change everything to do with the y-axis to the x-axis so I'll press command R to rename this variable I'll rename it direction x and it's equal to the sign of velocity.x ray length once again velocity.x instead of vertical ray count we're now wanting the horizontal ray count um, when we're setting the ray origin if direction x is equal to negative 1 that means we're moving left so we do want to start our ray from the bottom left, but if we're moving right, then we want to start our ray from the bottom right. All right, and uh, when we're casting our rays out horizontally, we want each ray to sort of be uh, stacked above the last one. So we'll use vector two dot up multiplied by horizontal ray spacing, and. Uh, we'll delete this bit about adding velocity.x and here in the raycast hit um, we want to change the direction to vector 2 dot right multiplied by direction x and uh, can just ignore, I'll, I'll actually just delete this draw ray for the moment um, if hit then velocity.x is equal to that and uh, that should be successfully converted to horizontal collisions. Um, I just want to update this draw ray so that we actually use the information we calculate above instead of sort of redoing it all. Um, so let's just change the position to ray origin and the direction to vector3.up multiplied by direction y. And let's also multiply by ray length so we can actually see how long the rays are. And uh, let's copy this and put it back into our horizontal collisions and direction y obviously becomes direction x and vector 2 dot up becomes vector 2 dot right. All right, so now above vertical collisions we first want to call horizontal collisions and we pass in a reference to velocity and uh, we only need to check for collisions of course uh, on the horizontal axis if velocity dot x is not equal to zero and uh, likewise with vertical collisions, if velocity dot y is not equal to zero, then we will look for collisions. All right, let us save and see if this is working. Um, I'm going to create a little obstacle over here to collide with. And let's see. All right, so the collisions are working from that side, and from this side, they are working as well. Brilliant. Um, one thing you might notice, well, you'll almost certainly notice, this ray is getting longer and longer, 
And if we were now to uh, step off the sledge, you can see the, the gravity has been sort of accumulating. And so, of course, we need to stop it doing that. But that is a problem for next episode. I'm going to wrap up this episode now. So uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. And I hope you've enjoyed. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Cheers.